Hi guys, it's me Karen and I'm going to come and <laughs> do a video on The Magical Dawn by Hannah Carlson and I picked out a picture and we're going to do it on this page here. A nice little um, butterfly with a pattern around it and some flowers. And the next page over here is the cute little birds and I'm going to probably do it like I did the last time. Colors that coordinate on the two pages. But we're going to start off on this page here. And what I thought I'd do is a dark background just inside the area here. Butterfly done in different colors, but I'm going to kind of stay in the same palette in this book. If you notice, I have the blues, the purples, and the um, kind of mauvey pinks kind of going throughout this book. Um, I'm going to do it more in like this colors here with the blues. And of course, this was the last one we did with these two butterflies here, or the butterfly and the flowers. Well, there's another butterfly. <laughs> I can count that, right? So um, I'm going to stay in the same color palette throughout this whole book, I believe. So um, I've got the uh, Prisma colors out that I'm going to use. And um, I have some gems in here also and that I have to figure out because I'm not the best at uh, faceted gems. But we will work on it. So we are going to go ahead and start with the um, butterfly moth, whatever this little dude is in the center and pick out our colors. And like I said, I'm going to do a blues and uh, pinks, probably purples and maybe some mauvey colors in the whole area. So I think I will do, if I do the background in the blue, I will go ahead and do the top wings in um, the pink bottom wings in the purple and then have or maybe not maybe I'll do purple well we'll figure it out we're gonna start with the top wings and we're gonna do those <laughs> in the uh, raspberry colors that I have picked out I will lower you down and we will get started okay I know that's a little close but I will move the book down so you can see we're going to start on this side here and the colors I'm going to use are Black Raspberry 1095, um, Plain Raspberry 1030, and Clay Rose which is 1017. And we will go ahead and do our darkest colors first. I'll move some of these pencils out of the way and we're just going to start on these sections here. And I'm just going to darken it, the top section part, and lighten it on the way down. And again, I'm going to be putting um, either stickles or sparkles in these little dotted areas so I don't need to go around them too good. I'm also going to bring this up from the bottom. So I kind of give it a little more pressure down at the points and then bring it out very softly. It just helps the blending process with the next color. And I will go over that and get it a little darker. I have to sharpen this pencil. Okay, then we're just going to bring in, and we might skip the raspberry. I'll put a little in and see. Sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. <laughs> but we'll put a little bit of it down here on this side. So, how is everybody doing? I started a picture in another book. 
Alma is having a really hard time with it. I'll probably show it to you a little later. It's not done yet. <laughs> this is the uh, clay rose and I'm just going to blend that in with the other colors and bring it up. I was going to do a video on the other page, but <laughs> um, I was having a lot of problems with the paper. So I started it off with Prismacolors and the paper hated these pencils. I mean, just hated it. It wouldn't go down. It would basically... Um, not show up. It just kept going white and blotchy and I tried to press harder. All it did was uh, get the wax buildup coming up and then it would just come off the paper. <laughs> it was just awful. So I decided I would try um, some other medias on it. So I thought, oh, well, you know, if it Prisma doesn't work, we will try some um, polychromos because they're harder. And that didn't work. <laughs> I gotta sharpen this, sorry. It's gonna make a little noise. So I tried the uh, polychromos that they did not work either. And I thought, well, that's not good. So I thought I'd try the Sargent art ones and they worked a little bit, but they still weren't coming out as seamless as I wanted. I'll tell you the book's name in a little bit. <laughs> I'll show you the picture. <laughs> so, um, I had, uh, my daughter come in and I asked her for her Crayola cra or pencils because I know that those sometimes I've heard people say that they'll work in some books and they don't work in others. So I tried those and believe it or not, they worked really nicely. But um, <laughs> she has a limited amount of colors in it. So there were no skin tones or anything like that. And the picture happens to have a, um, I believe a princess or a queen forest queen or something. This is just the clay coming in. I'm going to skip out the uh, other one and just blend those together. So <laughs> I thought water-based uh, media would work. So I got out the intense and thought well, if nothing else, you know, the water will seep through the paper. <laughs> and it did. But the thing is, I thought, you know, because some of my color books that I have, I didn't put dark up there. Um, you know, they buckle and stuff when you put a lot of water on them. And I uh, wasn't sure how much water I could put on it. And the ink tents would go down like chalk on the paper. Really uh, thick. So the coloring I was getting was a little off for, for me. So what I did was I used, um, well, we were talking on one of these chat room like not chat rooms, um, live streams. And May has uh, suggested that you could use the ink tents like watercolors. And I thought, well, what the heck, I will do that. So this is the coloration we're going to get. I will show you the picture. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to have to raise the camera because it's a big book. Okay, so this, this is the name of the book. <laughs> I'm not going to try to pronounce it because I can't. 
and this is the page I was doing. Okay, so I was doing her cape with the Prismacolors, and it just was splotch, 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 splotch. So then I decided I will just take the ink tents, put them down on um, kind of a piece of paper, plastic like this, and use them as watercolors. So then I could get a seamless uh, look on it. And as you can tell, I have uh, also put a lot of glitter on this page. <laughs> Trying to, uh, I don't know, cover up the, the lines that the other pencils did. So, lesson learned. And the next time I do a picture in here, I will do it with the ink tents <laughs> and or watercolor. The page never buckled and I did use quite a lot of water on that. So the nice thick pages. If you have problems, we just keep working at it until I get it right. And that's what I did. <laughs> okay, we're going to do this side now. Just the same as the other. These two down here will get the regular raspberry in it. And then the rest will just be the black raspberry and the clay roots. So yeah, I'll finish the uh, picture. But that's something. I, I, it was the first time I never I did a test page. I usually do, but I thought, no, I'll just get this one out and color in it and see where it goes. And obviously it did not go as I thought it would. <laughs> but if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't know that the pages can take a lot of water and I can use watercolor and or the ink tints in it. So that whole book will be done that way. I have the uh, second book of that also, so I'm going to do a test page in the second book to see if the paper is the same. Always interesting. I didn't even attempt to put any distress ink in there. The paper um, probably wouldn't take it very well unless I used it as a watercolor because it's so, it's like an invisible teeth in it that only take, you know, like a top layer of something and I don't think the inks would work terribly good in it. Go and then just in with the rose. I'm going to do these um, lines in black, so I don't mind going over those at all. I'll probably put a little white in there too, so I'll just darken this side up a little bit better. Okay. Now the outside of the wings I'm going to do, since pink and purple go so well together, we'll just go in with the um, purple set, and that is the Black Grape 996 Parma Violet. 1008 and grade lavender 1026. And we will go in with the black grape first. And we'll just go around the edge and up a little bit.
So I hope your new year is off to a great start. January is an interesting month for me. <laughs> My uh, niece is having a baby, so we went to a baby shower. She's having a little girl. Which is going to be fun. Okay, then we're going to go in with the uh, Parma Violet. And just go almost to the edge and over the other corner. Leaving a little space for the um, gray lavender. And so we had to go uh, shopping for a baby present. Man, we have a lot of baby clothes. All oh, really cute. And now the grayed lavender. And just bring that in and up. Ended up getting her. You know, I, I always think to myself, you know, baby needs um, like onesies and sleepers. And that's all they live in for the first couple of months. And you're changing them all the time because they spit up or spill on them or whatever, you know. <laughs> and uh, she's got on these um, uh, lists about, you know, cute little sweatpants and little jackets and I'm like gosh where is she taking this little baby <laughs> but boy where are there there's some cute stuff I'm trying to find my white um, pencil it's very small so it kind of I lose it all the time so there we are I got our number nine three eight there's my white <laughs> and I'm just gonna add a little bit on the tips up here help it blend in. I'm going to go down the center of these guys here. See, I ended up getting her some really cute uh, onesies. Um, with, it's a little set, so it comes up with like little um, different colors and stuff, and they all have little cat patterns on them. Of course, I like cats, so they have a dog. <laughs> but you know it's Auntie Karen so they get cats <laughs> I'll be going over these lines here with the black so I don't care if they're colored over do the same thing on the other side you don't really need to watch me do that but I'll do it for you So that was a lot of fun to do. And I've got a um, external hard drive for my computer. So I was running out of space on here. So we thought that was a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> it takes a long time to download all the stuff off your computer to a external device especially if you have an old computer like I do <laughs> so that had to run overnight and of course not being very techy I was like how do I know what all got on there all those pictures and all those documents <laughs> so I'd go in and look at all of that stuff before I would even get close to deleting it off my computer which is the whole point take it off the computer so you could have more space on it but yeah I was a little paranoid about that And then the white. Oh, 
Sorry, my hand's in the way. There. Okay, and then we're going to do the middle section here. And we're going to start with the blue. And those are our two colors, which are the um, Sky Blue Light 1086 and the Indigo Blue, which is uh, 901. And we're going to probably just do the whole bottom wing in this color, but we'll start up here. And just like the other side, we'll do the top and the bottom. And then we'll just go ahead and do this section. And I thought it'd be a nice idea to get myself a bookcase so I could put uh, coloring books in it. <laughs> yes, I have a lot of coloring books now. I started off with a very small amount and then I was gifted a lot, so now I have to have a bookcase, which was nice. So we went to um, Ikea. We have one down here, uh, pretty close. I thought that would be a great place to, to go look. It's been a long time since I've been to Ikea. It is a crowded <laughs> store. <laughs> I don't like crowds too much. I get a little anxious, so I kind of like want to get out. I don't like shopping to begin with, but so we're, uh, and it's not laid out like um, most uh, stores that have all their stuff in one spot. So you get to the whole section of bookcases and they're, you know, departments of the ones that look like furniture, the ones that just are utilitary, the ones that you want for crafts, the ones you want for your garage. <laughs> so, and they're divided by walls and of course little arrows all over the floor so you can figure out where you're going. <laughs> so we spent a couple hours in that department alone just looking at bookcases. So I finally settled down on one. It's dark brown and it, uh, it's it got um, four shelves times two because it's kind of a cubicle thing. And I thought, well, we'll get that home. You have, you take a, like a picture of the price tag and then you go down into the warehouse, then you find the darn thing and put it on a, uh, cart and then you take it and pay for it in another huge gigantic line. <laughs> oh well. So we thought oh, well, we'll get a bite to eat. Oh no, that didn't work out because there was a huge line for that too and I thought why why wait in line here for I don't know what it would have been hours practically <laughs> where I could go home and cook something so we went in and got the bookcase, came back and had a nice little lunch, and then I thought, well, I'm going to put the bookcase together. Yeah, because I'm crafty. I can do that, so brought it upstairs and set it on the ground. It took up most of the room I'm putting it in. <laughs> I'm like, oops, I may have gotten one too big. Like I said, I'm painting these black, so I don't mind going over them. So then I spent um, probably a good 20 minutes just reading the instructions on how to put the darn thing together. Once you figured it out, it wasn't too hard. It's just trying to read the instructions that come on a nice folded up piece of paper in like six different languages. 
So I spent a good hour and a half putting the whole thing together. And then of course you, you know, put it together on the ground. Uh, the little shelves in there and then you have to darn learn to lift the darn thing up <laughs> like why don't you put it together you know at least on its side so you can s <laughs> slide it up i don't know i was reworking all the instructions in my head thinking there's got to be a better way for this i'm just darkening up all this stuff because i didn't think it darkened got a little too light there anyway so i got it up and then i was like okay it's got little doors on the front so I can, you know, close it to hide some stuff. I'm going to do the body in greens. Why not? The green is going to be these colors here. So we're going to do moss green 1097, green ochre 1091, and the putty beige 0138 and we are going to start with the moss green and I'm just going to go up one side with it and bring it in yeah so I got the, um, the bookcase up I got the doors put on it and then started putting in some of the coloring books. Takes the two shelves up. They're, remember, square. So it's not like I have that many books. <laughs> and then I was going to put some more crafting supplies. Well, I missed all this blue up here. So I have to go back in here and do this. So and then I need to get um, like a basket to put some other things in. And I don't want just a plain basket. I want it to have some kind of style to it. So I've been on Amazon checking those out. I haven't found one that I like yet. But gosh, you know, I could just probably sew one together. Not that I get frustrated looking or shopping, but I kind of do. I'm bringing the blue. And we'll add in some white if I need to blend that a little bit better. Okay. Then we're going to go up when we're doing the moss green. Kind of up in this area here. And his little cheeks up here. Okay, then we're going to go in with the putty. And I'm just going to bring that around. There we go. And then we're going to do his little... Um, I'm an in focus, so sorry. I am bad at this. Go in with the mouse and we're going to bring it up to his little antenna. I think that's what they're called. This is a really strange bug in their antlers. So yeah, that's what I've been doing. I've got a spare room in the house that uh, we are changing kind of into an exercise um, room that 
also has the uh, bookcase and I'm going to get a um, this is the by the way green ochre and I'm just going around and darkening the corner areas and getting a um, kind of an art table for arts and crafts my daughter does a lot of uh, sewing and um, making craft stuff for presents. So I'm getting her one of those um, folding tables so we can have it out for her to use and then if we need it we can because it's a portable one we can take it um, downstairs and use it out on the deck for entertaining or we can use it in the house for um, little kids when they come over for it's adjustable so it goes down to 24 inches and up to bar height uh, higher than your countertops and I think that would be useful for her so I'm going to get that in that room too there we go I know, it's very colorful, isn't he? And he's getting stickles later, so that'll look nice. I need to sharpen my little white. And I have a... It's too short to go in my um, regular pencil sharpener. I have a Stadler um, little guy here I use for tiny pencils. So we're going to go up and put the white in here. Give them the white chips. Okay, and then down around here a little bit just to highlight them a little bit better. And then, like I said, I will go in and do the blues too and get them blended a little bit and I probably should get one of those pencil extender things <laughs> Make it a little easier on my fingers. And basically all I'm doing here is using the white as a blender. That works really nice. And then if I want it darker, I will go back in and darken it. But I'm going to use it on all of these. Okay, I'll do the other side later. I don't want to waste time doing that too much. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to do blue coming down here. I don't want blue there. Logical choice, though. I'm going to put some of the blue in down here. leave the scallop edge for a different color. Maybe I'll bring in um, a gel pen for that. And 
and then the sorry, sky blue. And then we'll go over it again with the white. There. Kind of jewel toned. Pretty. All right. Now we have. Oh boy. I think I'll start on a flower because we have all these little flowers down here. And I'm going to do those in the um, pink tones, the mauvey pink. So this is the black raspberry. And I'm just going to go up one side, same side on all of these. There's a side under there somewhere. So just starting in the middle and going up one side. And then kind of just bringing it up very lightly in the center. So you kind of have a wheel effect going on. And then I will just go in with the play rose another one over here. Which one's this one? Rosy beige. Try the rosy beige and see how that looks. That looks good. We're going to use that. So this is rosy beige um, 1019. And we're just going to blend it out with that. Just make sure we get that blended. And if we need to darken it up, we'll just come back in and add some more color. Okay, and since all the flowers are going to be just done the same, I'm also going to bring in a little black, which is uh, 935, and we're going to go over these black lines that I colored over just to bring them out again. Hi guys, uh, sorry the um, camera cut out. So I had done a leaf, and of course I showed you how I did the uh, little flower, and I added in some more of the, uh, um, what is it, the black raspberry in here, just to blend it in a little bit better. And I'm going to show you again how I did the leaf since it didn't show you in the camera. Sorry about that. 
Um, it's the three colors that I did the last leaves in. So we're going to start off with the Moss Green 1097. Go in with the uh, Putty Beige, which is 1083. And then go back in with the Green Ochre 1091. Okay, so we start off with the Moss Green. And I'll do the leaf right next door to it. <laughs> And we just uh, put in a little base of that on the center and on the tips. Just like that. Then we're going to go in with the Putty Beige and we're going to connect those two colors. Then we're going to go in with the Green Ochre and darken up the center and coming out on the side here and you can play with this color all you want how dark you want to get it how much you want in there and if you want to leave these areas a whitish color you just bring in your white and go over that part. And I know that the lines have gotten a little muddy. You just go in with the black and you could add a little of that down here in the um, corner areas just to deepen those tones too. Did that on the flower, just bring it up a little tiny bit, very light, dark pressure on the lines, and just a little bit of the black in the shadow areas. I did that on the uh, flower areas down in here too. I don't know if that got caught, but I hope it did. Anyway, so that's how the flowers are done. Now the other part that you didn't see was I started work up here at the top. And I'm just laying down the indigo blue. And I just ran it up here, doing it kind of dark and then lightening it up. And that's all this is, is just this one color so far. And we just bring it in and then pull it down lighter. And going up. Here, I'm going to go dark here and bring it up lighter up here. And these areas are just going to be dark. So basically that's what you missed when the camera went out. Sorry about that. I hadn't realized how much time I was um, filming. Camera will take a lot of uh, video, but when it gets past the 40 minute mark, it will get mad at me. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to finish going around just the top layer, just about here. And then I'm going to blend it into a different color down at the bottom. I haven't decided what color. I usually do this with ink, but I wanted to do it with pencil today. So we're just going to bring it down on the other side also doing that. And then we will connect it with the, um, what is this? The sky blue light. And we'll just be 
touching that and bringing it down into a very, 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 very pale color at the bottom down here. But I want the color, so we're going to bring it all the way down. And basically, that's what we will be doing. And in here, we'll just lighten some of this up, leaving the darkest spot, though. And I haven't gotten that quite dark enough. Then we will um, go back in, and any place I want darker, I will just add some more of that indigo blue. And if I want it darker still, I will go in with wherever I put it, <laughs> the black. So if I want it dark, dark here, I'll just add some of the black in here and bring that down. Just to darken up those edges a little bit more. Okay, so I'll do the blue part. It's just faded down and it'll fade up the same way. And then I will figure out the color down here. I'm going to do in the purple, I believe. Why? Because I need some purple down here. So I'm going to do it the same way. Okay, we're going to just put in the black grape down here. And I'm putting a bit of pressure on here to get the darkest color. And then I will lighten it going up. Same in here. And I think I'm going to go in here too. Do that up at the top. That way I'm just leaving these as iron work. I think I'm going to do those in black so it'll look like... Um, Rod iron. Okay. So we want some of this purple going all the way up and then lightening. Okay, I'll do that um, just on the inside. I'll do it over here too, but I wanted to show you what I'm going to do with it next. So we're going to go in straight in with the uh, grayed lavender. Okay, and we're going to blend those two together and bring the lavender up. And just blend those two colors together. It's the same as what we did on the butterfly, except for we are leaving out the Parma violet and just going in with the gray lavender. Okay. 
So then we will go up here and it'll just get lighter and lighter. But I want the color so it's very faint, but it's there. And if I get it too dark there, I will just go in with the white and lighten it up a bit. Okay. And what I'll do is go up here also. I have to wipe off the pen or the pencil tip. So I don't want any purple up there. Just bring that white up here also. Helps it blend in any colors, but also lightens it where I want. I'm sorry, you're not seeing that. Just bringing it up here. <laughs> and adding some of that in just to blend those together. Okay. So the blue will come down, the purple will come up, and I don't know if I'll put it on the outside. I think I'm just going to keep it on the inside and leave the outside for sparkles. Anyway, I will uh, go ahead and finish this off camera, and it's just done the same way, other side, just with the light, and it's just going to be light here and the blue coming down and they will mix. They shouldn't mix too badly. They're both very light colors. What I'll do is I'll add a little bit of that blue. Where's blue? Where's indigo blue? It's black. Indigo, where did you go? I lost it. Well, we'll bring down some of the light blue because I can't find the darker blue. Okay, it'll come down. And that's where it'll stop, and we will be bringing up the gray lavender. Are you getting this? I don't know if you're getting this. Hope you're getting this. Very light, very light, almost non-existent touch here, so you can put your finger way at the end of the pencil. So you can see the purple down here, but you can't see it right there. You can see the blue up here. And then they will merge. And we will blend those two together. Just like that, running very softly into each other. Okay, the best, and then if you have any problems with these two blending, just take the white and burnish them together. And there you have a nice little blend between the two. And that's how I'm going to blend them across. Okay, when I get back, I will show you the finished Oh, we haven't done the gems. Darn. Here, I thought I was going to be almost finished. I've got to do at least one of those, right? There are three. There's one here, one here, and one here. There are faceted. This one at the top, I'm not sure. I'm just going to use that like a cabochon up there. But these little guys down here, I have to color. So, <laughs> we have the purple here, purple here, blue here, blue here. So what color are we missing? is the pink. We'll go ahead and add in kind of all of these colors into the faceting because why not? Found the indigo blue. We will find the uh, raspberry and we will find the, we'll do the parma because that's probably a pretty light color. Okay, so we're going to start on this one down here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in some of the red in some areas. Just going to make some uh, little piece of pencil there. Triangly areas here because it's faceted. It would hit the light different. So 
I'll put one up here. But I'm just going to add in extra facets. And we have the blue, and we'll put one here. And one about there. And one over here. There's no rhyme or reason to this. It's just I want some extra light in there. I'm going to bring up some of the blue here and leave a shine area. Okay, now some of the purple. And we'll just stick it in here and there. And then bring some of the purple into here. All right, now we're going to go get the lightest color, and that is the white. And I'm going to kind of push pretty hard here and get these to blend a little. Then I'm going to go back in with the raspberry. Just kind of darken some of these spots. Okay. There. And a little bit of the indigo. Just going to go back around here. Just because it makes a really pretty color in the white. Darken the edge. And then we're going to add a little bit of Posca in there. See if I can find my Posca pen. I had it out too. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yes, I did. Okay. We're going to put like a little dot here and then a line coming down and up. Kind of mimicking the shine that you would get from the light. I'm also going to do it out here. You might want to get a better pen to do that with, but I'll go over it a few times. I think you can see a bit of the white. Try this one instead, see if it works any better. Okay. We're going to do that to all of them. On top of that, on the flowers, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here. These are going to be stickled, and I'm just going to go up with some dots and a line and a few more dots on each one. I'm going to alternate dot, dot, line, and then Do it like that and I'm going to do that on all the flowers just to add some texture to those. I probably will add some of that also on his body and maybe in this area here, not sure. And like I said, I'm doing that in black and I'm going to debate on whether I want to do it with a um, pen. See, I don't know if it, I have one that works. I have one. It's a brush marker, but I don't think I want to use that one. But we could go in with uh, just the black. So I don't think it's going to be dark enough, but we'll check it out. I'm going to want that raised up. So, I think I have stickles in black. I'm not sure. Anyway, when I come back, I will show you the finished product. Each one of these gems is going to look the same, except for the top one because it doesn't have any facets. I'll just use the same colors. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you have a great day.
Thanks for supporting my channel. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. If you want to see more videos, go ahead and ring the bell. And if you like it, put a thumbs up for me. Take care, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye now.